Lagos State Government on Sunday streamlined the guidelines on gradual easing of the COVID-19 lockdown as they relate to markets, offices, restaurants, and public transportation. Addressing journalists at State House Marina, the State Governor Babajide Sonwolu said food markets would be allowed to open on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays, while non-food markets would open on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, all between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. However, restaurants and eateries have their operational hours extended from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. to enable Muslims faithful observing the Ramadan to buy food to break their fast in the evening. But they are only permitted to serve takeaways. Listen to this. Non-food markets will be open on Mondays, on Wednesdays, and Fridays. All other non-food markets will be open only on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I hope that this directive will be strictly adhered to. This is also an attempt for people not to rush out. This is also a, a case that we want to really, really slow down how people get into the activity you know, of the economy. We will continue to encourage people to work from home and people to have flexible working hours. Um, like, like we said, and we'll continue to say that uh, if you don't need to tr come out, you don't have to. And I'm sure that the private sector people, the private sector companies will cooperate with us with it. And stay with me in studio to react to this is uh, Chude uh, Achike. Before I say Achike, Achude again. <laughs> All right. What's your thought? Do you honestly think we are ready for this uh, easing of lockdown? No, I do not think so. I think a lot of people are worried about the implications for that. Uh, again, you have to... Uh, I consider this in the context of our situation in the country. I think that the government bowed, you know, to pressure. Uh, they gained pressure that is occasioned by the government's inability to provide adequate palliatives, mm -hmm. you know, for the citizens. And that in itself um, elicited all kinds of very negative, you know, reaction and behavior from Nigerians. There was, the, I mean, the is, is problem of insecurity and the fact that there was a noticeable defiance to some extent of uh, the ban, mm. uh, you know, on movements. And the reality is that um, even with the best, you know, security infrastructure in place, government needs the cooperation of citizens for some of these others to succeed. Right. Uh, because um, if the people, and that means that people must buy into it. And I think that the very must first... see a need for yes, it. Yes, they, they must see a need for it. And I think that the, very, the first week, second week of the lockdown, a lot of people understood. And it is not as if people still do not understand. But the reality is that um, people now have to navigate between the devil and the deep blue sea. Mm. Uh, between the, the, the dangers of uh, COVID-19 and the possibility of starvation, uh, you, you know. And so uh, I think that is what has brought people more, you know, to the street. And that is what government has given them. But it is not essentially because we have actually gone beyond the, the threshold that the government put in place. Uh, the transmission has gone from, I mean, what it was before. It is now communal, and that is what is worrisome because it becomes difficult for you to handle it. Um, and so uh, it is critical at this point, having, you know, taken this decision to begin a phased easing off of uh, the lockdown mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that uh, instructions are strictly followed by the citizens. And I think a lot needs to be done, mm -hmm. not just by individuals themselves but a lot of the especially in the area of transportation because you are now going to have people mingling in the buses and the rest they talked about 60 percent uh you know passenger uh, intake for mm. each movement that they are going to make but in some when i was coming here there are some buses that were practically full now we don't need that right. so this is when a uh, government needs to lean heavily on the unions uh, the leadership of all of these unions to make sure and to also warn them that if there's a violation of this instruction, then there's a possibility that the government will stop them from moving. Mm. They have already known, they have been without you know, means of livelihood all this while, so they know what it means. Uh, when they say half bread is better than none, now they are, you are being given half, half, half a loaf of bread, mm -hmm. it's better than not having it at all. So they must not jeopardize it by violating the terms of you know, this movement. Mm -hmm. And then, then uh, that also applies, I think, you know, uh, with other, 
uh, uh, levels of uh, engagement within the society. Uh, the instructions that have been given must be adhered strictly as much as possible by, by government. Nose masks and all of those things are things that government mm -hmm. has also insisted should be done. And lastly, be I know you're talking about compliance from the people and what the government needs to do, but should we also be worried that at the place where we are, because not just you, other medical experts are saying this decision is quite premature. Are you worried that you know where we are is a place where we could possibly get a, you know, a second hit, you know, a wave of combat? Well, look, so look, look, the reality is, I mean, people tend to have to feel comfortable when they are being told after how many weeks now mm. of this COVID-19, maybe about eight weeks now in Nigeria, uh, people tend to feel comfortable that, well, 2,000, less than 3,000, we are doing well. We are doing well. How well are we really doing? Perhaps if we had about maybe 500 testing centers in the country, we'd be talking about something in the region of 50,000, then that becomes exceedingly worrisome. 50,000, I mean, infected people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we must not be deceived by the fact, by the figures. These figures are only a manifestation of the fact that we have not been testing enough people. You understand? So there is that possibility of a sudden surge, uh, you know, in the number of infected cases with this a relaxation of the lockdowns, especially mm -hmm. you can imagine what will happen in a typical market, Ladipo, computer village, sure. you know, uh, Balogu, and all these other places. So uh, that's why I keep on saying that, look, even if we cannot prevent uh, uh, lifting of this, uh, you know, lockdown, I mean, easy enough of the lockdown, but we must now lean heavily on market association leaders, you know, and the unions and all of that to ensure that at least uh, while they allow their members to be operational, but that they must also make sure that there is some level of compliance by their members too. All right, thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Chude. There. Yeah. Now, moving on, Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduje says the state is in trouble due to the presence of the coronavirus disease. Speaking on Sunday at the presentation of a COVID-19 mobile testing center donated by the Dangote Foundation to the state, Ganduje said the delay in testing suspected cases was responsible for the exploding number of coronavirus infections in the state. He said the fact that samples needed to be taken to Abuja for seven hours before being returned for, uh, seven hours later is also a problem. According to the governor, the president, Muhammad Buhari, has ordered for the establishment of a testing center at Aminu Kanu Teaching Hospital. The governor also expressed optimism that the coming back of the Aminu Kanu Teaching Hospital Testing Center, the addition of Bayero University Kanu, with a testing capacity of about 200 samples per day, and with the coming of Dangote Mobile Testing Center of 400 samples uh, capacity, headway was now being made in the fight against COVID-19. Also present at the event, the Director General of Nigeria Center for Disease Control, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu, reassured the people of Kanu that they had not been abandoned. According to the NCDC, as of the time of this report, uh, 313 coronavirus infections have been reported in Kanu. Again, I'd like to pick your brain. I'm sure you see what is going on in Kano State. Um, did you think at any point that we, something was missed out in terms of sensitization of the people on how serious this matter is? Obviously, Kano is a burgeoning crisis. There's no doubt about that. And uh, from what we are seeing, it's only going to get worse unless uh, much more is done. Uh, the reality, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think um, there was this um, lackadaisical at attitude approach by the government of uh, Kano State uh, for the issue of uh, COVID-19. We, I don't know how authentic the videos that you know uh, are that we're making the round on social media about uh, indigenous of uh, Kano mm. uh, looking at uh, the COVID-19 with uh, some level of skepticism and contempt or disdain. Uh, we saw people washing their hands and drinking it. And, well, we uh, saw, giving, the, the commissioner said, of Kano yeah. said, uh, well, 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 that, said that, that particular yeah, one was yeah, not Yeah, well, well, that's what the commissioner says. Uh, we know sometimes uh, when these things come from government, we don't know. But the reality, that's why I started by saying I don't know how authentic it is. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that um, what that video itself also depicts the initial position or posturing of a lot of Nigerians about COVID-19, not just beyond Kano State, mm. even in other parts of the country, there was this skepticism about it and all that. But beyond that, again, I think the government of Kano State did not show, uh, did not uh, embody the importance and the urgency and the critical urgency of the, of the danger of this COVID-19. And so I think from the body language of uh, the, the, the government itself, people took uh, 
you know, people took a few things away from the body language of, uh, of the government. And so the government, I think, has just woken up. Uh, but it's almost too late in the day, but a lot of things can still be done. Now they have gotten a testing uh, facility, you know, in Kano State. Uh, so I, I, I want to believe that um, they, they need to do everything that has to be done to ensure that uh, the, whatever it is, uh, I mean, uh, that this level of uh, degeneracy in the, uh, the spread of the uh, COVID-19 can be arrested to a very, very large uh, extent. It's better late than, than never, but I, I, I suspect that if they had done much more earlier, Mm -hmm. We will not get to this level where you are having as much as uh, 15 cases being reported from Kano in one day. And like again, we are all saying uh, the fact that there is no testing, uh, they don't have adequate testing facilities in Kano, perhaps is responsible for the low numbers that we are having in Kano. I mm -hmm. think what is happening is much, much higher than what we have been told. Uh, so Kano, I think, is, uh, has become, you know, uh, uh, a melting point of uh, this uh, crisis and mm. so much more needs to be done and I'm glad that the federal government through the Center for Disease Control are showing adequate uh, level of uh, worry and are doing things to ensure that it is curtailed.